like and subscribe. Go <laughs> on, yeah. say it. Like and subscribe. There we go. <laughs> Hi guys, I'm Dave, for those of you that don't know me, and welcome to Maker. And today I'm going to give you a tour about what's going on, what we've been making, what's new in the workshop, and we've got a new project. You see this one up here? We've actually not given this a name yet. This belongs to a car that, is, I think the customer is actually in Abu Dhabi, and his name is Neil, and if you come under here, so this is a prime candidate for our chassis treatment, and brake line treatment and it's having new axles. So Neil called me a few weeks ago and said, Dave, I want to do a bit of, I think his words were gentleman's overlanding. So straight away, he said to me, Dave, there's been a recall about the new swivels on the axles. And um, those of you who don't know, under here, if you look under there, Land Rover had an issue with these axles cracking. So if you've ever got any damp patches around this area, get your car back into Land Rover or into a specialist and get it checked. You can see here, this one needs swivel seals for sure. But anyway, Neil said to me, Dave, he said, I don't want to take it back for a recall. He said, I want to make them stronger. I want to make them beefier and I want to make them rock proof. So if it hits a rock, it doesn't cave your diff pan in or cause any damage. So I called the guys at Mayer who make the heavy duty axles and beautiful axles. I've actually got my Churchill next door. And I said, while you're at it, Neil, let's improve the brakes. Let's improve the suspension. So we're going to go with Polybush. We're going to go with heavy duty arm kit. We're going to go with heavy duty anti-roll bar kit. We're going to probably put some better springs and some better shocks on this car. I think he's going to go for the build sign 2.65s, the real big daddy shocks that you know I love. And he's going to go the full hog, basically. And while it's on the ramp and the axles are off, Bruno's going to work his magic and make the chassis look new again. John, what's happening? Good morning, young man. Well, what we're doing here is we're fitting a brand new rear cross member and also fitting the plates at the back here. So where this chassis ends, I'm going to be uh, bringing it forward so it joins to these plates. Uh, and then we're all going to be good. And Bruno's here helping me out here. Helping My glamorous place. assistant. <laughs> yeah, with his November moustache. And are we, we can obviously see there's a bit of corrosion going on, back of the chassis. Yeah. Is there anything happening with that? Yeah, well basically what's going to happen is, we're going to be fitting these. Well, obviously I'll be cutting it down, but that's the, the plan sort of thing. So it's going to be reinforced. I'll come along weld. Once these have been cut down to size, I'll weld these in and it'll be as, uh, as good as new then, right? Yeah. And then it'll be ready for Bruno to, um, to blast afterwards. Oh, like and subscribe. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right, Bruno, what have you been doing this morning on this car? So this morning has been a very busy morning of blasting. Uh, this, is, this chassis is probably one of the worst ones that we have done. However, it wasn't in a state wasn't quite in a severe state to be chucked the chassis away and put a new one under it. So we've decided to, as you say, recycle the chassis. But what we have had to do is cut the old rear cross member off. That's been cut off. And as Big John said, we're getting a new one welded on. And then when that's welded on, I'll run the blaster over the cross member, prime it and uh, do it in a bit of tough coat, along with his, with his axles as well. We've had to move that one because it was a, a little bit in the way where I had it positioned. But yeah, that's the plan, get it all painted. He's having uh, some nice galv arms and super pro bushes to go in and then get it all back together and yeah, it'll be nice. What's up? Oh, 
pas om zo in te doen. So, welcome to the sand pit. I'm also just going to call it Bruno's Beach. What should we call it that? Bruno's Beach, when we get a big sign outside. So, this, believe it or not, is actually glass. It looks like sand, but it is glass. So, come around here. If you look under there, so basically what's happened here is we cut off the original corroded, rottenness howl rear end, and we've installed, this is a six mil heavy duty, rear cross member. I believe I got these off Dixon Fabrication originally, bought a job lot of them, and they're great really. They've, they come with heavy duty recovery eyes, super helpful, especially if you're gonna get stuck and things like that. What I do like here is you've got threaded bosses inside, so for the all important tow bars, etc. and this is six mil. So if somebody runs into the back of this Land Rover, this Land Rover's not gonna go anywhere. And when we fit rear cross members, guys, we, we go to the extra length, if you see under here, that's a galvanized rear strip. These normally come when you fit a galvanized chassis, but what I hate is when this cross member is black, you see this starting to corrode against the body. And underneath there, there's a strip of, um, we use um, Silkaflex, and the Silkaflex stops the aluminium corroding against the steel. So it's an extra thing. And what we're gonna do on this car is go with a galvanized rear tank support. So previously this car was very rotten, and see the photo shortly that I'm gonna attach this video. So, Bruno's worked his magic under here, and then John has been welding these pieces in. So what we do is we overlap the chassis as much as we possibly can. We weld the inside where we possibly can. So we'll weld the inside here, and then we come back over with the MIG and we weld it inside. So we've welded inside and outside, and basically encapsulate the chassis to stop debris getting in there and rotting. And the best bit is the back here, they're not double skinned like conventional ones that allow moisture and people see it here on this edge, you see it like bursting because the moisture is in between the layers. So this back end will outlive this car, that's for sure. Like and subscribe. What's this Dave? So what we've got here is the BMW 204 from the E46 to the MT82 adapter. So what I'm doing here, I'm just checking that all the bolt holes are correct. Um, not that I don't trust my machinist, it's just that I like to check things because people make mistakes, everyone makes human errors, and just check all the threads are nice, go through it. And what I'm basically doing now is getting this ready to go in the post. Um, we've got a guy that's he's actually converting, I think it's actually a Defender. So we're converting this for him, he's having a set of mounts off me. Um, and what you'll notice here, we include the dowels. And it's important on the engine kits that these dowels are present because We've had it in the past where we, had, we bought an adapter from um, somebody else. And when we bolted on, it was literally probably 0.5 of a mil out. And we kept having an issue with the car jumping out of fifth gear. And we were like chasing our tail. And I was ringing Tom at Winchester. I was like, Tom, there's something wrong with this gearbox. He went, no, it's not Dave. There's nothing wrong with my box. It was the adapter. And we used to rely on the countersinks to align. Basically, when it's on the engine like so, we'd rely on these countersinks here when they pull up tight. So these are M12, fair old bolts. When they're pulled up tight, the four there, it'd be pretty central. And I want to say one in, one in 10 would be absolutely bob on. And then one day we had this issue and I thought, what is this bloody thing? And sure enough, we swapped the adapter out, put the same identical gearbox back in and no problem jumping out of fifth. So we've come up with this adapter. A good friend of mine in the engineering world, he drew this with a Renninshaw probe on the machine. 
pick pointed it all out. I had to send him a block, so I had to sacrifice an engine in the process. I can show you some pictures shortly of what we did to make this. So I had to cut a block in half so we can fit it in the mill. And you'll see in this next video, so we dropped it into the mill. He picked out the crank sensor and worked his way back from there. Then we had a bit of headache here with the starter area. This is where the starter motor lives. And because you don't use the existing Puma one, you actually use the BMW one in the BMW flywheel. The, the starter motor has to be moved. So then we sell a dust cover that goes on the back, basically. Say it. Like and subscribe. There we go. <laughs> oh, like and feed the cheese. Like and subscribe. <laughs> yeah, what, what, like? Gwen Lewis. The what? Gwen Lewis. Gwen Lewis. Gwen, oh, fuck Gwen is, Lewis. Yeah, it says on Gwen there. Lewis. Gwen or oh, fucking Gwen. Not Gwen. <laughs> Gwen. <laughs> no, Gwen. Gwen Lewis. It's Welsh. Gwen. Gwen. Gwen is Patro. <laughs> I can call him Gwen. You you can't. Gwen. Louis friends with him, so he, he can call him what he wants. I have an excuse. You don't. <laughs> right, Jacob. What's happening? Well, I'm fitting some Gwen Lewis mud flaps on. I said Gwen. Yeah, so we're finishing off now. We're putting all the little bits back on on this Raptor. Uh, there's been a lot done to it, but I'm not too sure what's actually been done. Um, I haven't really worked much on it, I've only stripped bits off it. That's fine, we'll ask Dave later. Yeah. So, what needs doing to get these mud flaps on? It's a pretty simple job. Yeah, it's quite simple to be honest. We've got these brackets. So this bracket will bolt onto the chassis where the bulkhead mount is on. So this will go there. And then this bracket will go to either one of these or one of these, depending on how straight it will go on to, it will sit in like this nicely. So sit like that. And then this make sure, these two brackets make sure it's gonna be straight. I'll have to set it right. And then you got this plastic cover, which will be going behind this cover, sitting up behind and out the way. And then the mud flaps will be sitting on. Uh. Where are we up to on Precious? Rear windows today, mate. Um, just about finished these. Rubber seal to go on, then we'll get the... Dave's gonna take them to the glazier and he'll make a pane of glass for each side. 
And then we've just got to trim the inside. Nice. So is it a pretty simple job? Matching the mm, panels and everything? Nothing simple when it's custom like this. Every little thing has to match where the trim goes on the inside. Um, it's all double skinned as well, so lots of fiddly work. That's looking good for it. So it's getting glass cut next. Yep. I'm guessing then it's going to paint as well. Yep, that's it. Uh, and then is that pretty much it for the cabin? That's the one. Um, it's. I think it's going to look really good with the with the window. It's, we've not seen anything like this done before, so it'll be interesting. And then we're onto the tub. Onto the tub. Leaving that bit for last. So do you have any sort of plan for how you're going to do this with the tub? Not quite yet. We're, we're still working it out. We've basically got to cut that much out of it. Yeah, I'll leave that to you. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> Day on project pressure. So Pete's been busy this week in making these side windows. So when Jason was here last time, we popped the seat inside and we realized that this is a big blind area. And for those of you that are above five foot, the, the lower guys don't realize this, but this pillar is right in your peripheral vision, I want to say. So I always have to look right and you have to do that awkward crouch forward. It's no good for your back. So his head here, I want to say is going to be about here. Jason's not exactly a tall chap. I'm not size this or anything like that, so don't quote me on that. So he looks through this window and can see what's incoming. And more to give the cab, you know, a nice spacious feel of the outdoors. After all, he is going to experience some nice places in this car. So call it what you like, king cab, extra cab, XL cab. But we've added a rear part on here. We're going to basically join this up here. We're going to weld these holes up, dress it all off in the body shop. So all you see is a very neat seam there that we're going to use, silk flex or a paintable sealant, something like that. And Pete's next big job is to cut a bit out of that tub. I noticed last week a few comments, smart people that like to leave comments said, why don't you use a 130 tub? Well, I'll tell you what, as a challenge, someone find me a 130 tub, an immaculate one that is as immaculate as that. And if you do, I'll give you hundred quid. So for those of you that don't know, this engine here is the BMW B58. Three litre, stonking turbo, direct fuel injected, straight six, out and out, rev monster, comes in the M4, comes in the M2, and we're gonna put one in a Defender. And what you see there is a Defender six-speed MT82. We love this gearbox. Many slate it, many put it down, but if you get it built properly, and Tom builds these very well at Winchester Gears, I've got a number of heavy duty ones next door, waiting for the destined of the new homes. We made this billet adapter here, which transforms Land Rover to BMW. We made it as tiny as we possibly could out of some really strong material, so it lasts. And what you see here, so Dave, my legendary CAD drawing extraordinaire, came up with this. This is plastic, it was plastic printed. So this is gonna live here, and this is gonna to go to my mounts. The same mounts that we've used with the BMW M57. We've put nearly 900 newton meters of torque through the M57, so these are gonna more than be ample for this engine. This is the steel one. So we're gonna have a budget mount, and we're gonna have a billet mount. Who would like the billet mount? Like, I think it's pretty in plastic, let alone, imagine that in billet. It's gonna have maker on the side of it and it's just gonna look top notch. This here, it's totally webbed, biscuit jointed, fully TIG welded. That's gonna live on there. It's gonna look pretty neat. That'll drop onto bobbin mounts that have great vibration properties. And it'll be, a, I think this is gonna be a really good swap. So for those of you, I wanna say we're probably, this is gonna be a January job. This car, this is gonna be in the chassis in January. And I wanna say we're gonna make in some petrol straight sick noises. Straight six noises for a change. 
So what we have here, this is actually a genuine Tomb Raider and well, three quarters of a Tomb Raider currently. So the roof has gone off a painting because it was blistering and the lacquer was coming off. And why it's here, it's going to have an LT1. Eight speed gearbox, automatic of course. It's had the new axles, heavy duty arms, ATB diffs front and rear, the full Monty basically. So what you see here, fully reworked basically. So the mechanics are solid. The body, we've painted some parts, but not all of it. And it's going to look a great truck when it's done. happening today in the trim shop yeah we're doing um, a new thing Dave's uh, looking at a starting doing so we're looking to embroider on the uh, dash parts for the uh, for the center for the console on the dash um, so anybody interested let us know and we'll uh, see what we can do so is that done in-house or is that done elsewhere and, and then? These are, do, these are done elsewhere, the, the embroidery is done elsewhere and then we sew it together. We put the, the stitching on here, it's, it's made up here, but the, the um, embroidery side is done on uh, off-site. So then not just for the dash either, I've just noticed these ones, these look yeah, like they're... We've, got, we've also got some panels that we're going to look at making up to make up the headrest, so you'd be able to have them on the face of your headrest with the maker signage on your seats. Nice. But the best way of doing it on the on is on the headrest, because then if at a later date you want to change it, if you're going to sell the vehicle, it'd be easy for us just to make a headrest instead of recover a full seat for you. So it's an option you can have without worrying about when you if you change the vehicle and somebody wants something different we can always make it different for you and change it back back to standard this looks fresh as well what's um, this yeah that was one i've done already the one i'm in the process of doing at the moment is this one which is um a rear door panel which is to go for the oh the the 90 that's downstairs the blue 90, I can't remember the, the name of the blue 90. So we've got the the door panels uh, somewhere about, oh, the door panels are up there already. And, and then this will be the rear door. So that'll all be then covered in the leather to match the doors and the, the uh, diamond stitching to go with the seats that are already in the vehicle. But we can do any of your panels, if you just want a set of panels doing, do all fronts, rear door panels, and then the rear section, or any of, the, any of the trim panels inside we can cover in leather if you require. So any color, any colored stitching, if you want to make an inquiry, we can do that for you. Job complete? Yeah, the one side is complete now. I'm gonna be moving on to the next side in a minute. This is how this is how it's supposed to look. As you can tell, the mud flap is straight. 
So do you have a bit of adjustment in terms of being able to move them about on the bracket? Wow. Well, now it's on, you can't adjust it, but before, because I had to dr drill, drill my own holes so it's lined up properly. Because on these, these don't line up to, uh, to how the mud flap's supposed to sit, because the mud flap's sticking out. So I had to move the holes going across, because it's the wider arches. So there's room to adapt? Yes. Car by car, basically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. If the arches ain't as wide, you probably could use the original holes. Well, but, but we make it work, we make it fit. So, Project Murray is nearing completion. The lads have put the grill back on today. They've put the Grindleris mud flaps on today. What else have you done, Louis? So this is what you call a NAS rear step, for those of you that don't know. Um, very popular, everyone likes those because they double up as a step, you know, when you're climbing in the back of the cars. Um, other than that, it's gonna be a, it's certainly gonna pick its feet up this car. So he's gone from a 300 TDI to an M57 six speed. So he's gonna get better cruising, better miles per gallon and a bigger smile on his face when he gets the, the boost button. So here's a prime example of what a 2014 Defender 90 can look like underneath. Come look at this. So, you see all this crust blistering coming from the lack of paint that Land Rover actually put on this truck. So, what we're going to do, this is going to go into Bruno's Beach and basically get the full treatment. So, this car is actually for sale on our website and we're going to go for another look. This car was actually built for a bit more expedition, a bit of overlanding and we're actually going to go a bit more classic with it. So, we're going to go um, one inch lower, we're going to go Fox suspension, we're going to go with nicer accents and nice clean lines on the sides with our stainless steel protection side rails. We're gonna go with a nice clean stainless steel front bumper. Very similar to the Porsche BTS, if you like. So if you're interested in a car, this is gonna be for sale circa 45, 50,000 pounds. So get in touch if you're after a beautiful 90 with a beautiful interior. So thanks for watching guys and please like and subscribe if you haven't already. I really appreciate the love and the following that I'm getting on this channel and it's been really hard to try and fit this in, especially with how busy we've been, but we try and dedicate ourselves to helping you, the followers, and giving our customers an insight of actually what's going on with their vehicles as I know they do appreciate it. So give me some love and appreciation and I'll see you next week. Thank you. Mm -hmm.